hello everyone so hopefully uh, i'm visible hello hello all india youth julie hello abid so let's uh, wait for just 2 3 minutes so that uh, we we'll get more number of viewers Fine. hello disha hello jili so am i uh, audible if i'm audible then please uh, give a thumbs up or just say yes good evening so am i uh, audible uh, yes abid uh, the pdf is, will be made available so i'll share the pdf so let me complete this uh, lecture once okay so i think uh, i am audible uh, to everyone okay so uh, good evening everyone so my name is chiran and i'll be uh, taking this course of prelims booster for biodiversity environment and ecology and uh, so is there any background sound um, i mean is it uh, uh, too much it's making you a little uncomfortable So it will be shared. I'll be uh, sharing the slides uh, through uh, Google Drive. So I'll give the link uh, later. So in the same lecture. Okay. Hello, Logaprint. So I think the voice is perfect. okay so um well let's uh, start the lecture so i'll be dealing with uh, three important aspects biodiversity so environment and ecology so um these three things often in fact uh, will be always dealt along with geography so people usually think that geography environment ecology biodiversity everything comes under one platform so uh, there will be lot of uh, you know mesh up which will be created to bifurcate these three so uh, it is always uh, okay 
So just a second. I'll just see if I could uh, switch off the fan. And, How about now? So is it okay now? Is it okay? The uh, I think the background problem has been solved. So kindly comment. Good evening, Heman Kumar. Good evening, Chandala. Okay. So, uh, if the background problem has been solved, I think we can move ahead. Uh, I have switched off everything. I don't think there should be any problem with the background noise. Okay, fine. Thank you so much. So, uh, I was uh, telling that biodiversity, environment, ecology, in fact, even with uh, geography, will always be taken as, uh, you know, uh, one topic. But the thing is, these are having their own, uh, you know, subunits which are specific to those topics. And uh, in order to understand uh, things better and in order to be able to re remember or memorize the concepts of ecology, environment and biodiversity, it is always preferable that you study them separately instead of, um, uh, you know, studying it under a single banner, it is always preferable that we should go individually with these three topics. So what I have done here uh, to make it more comfortable, I have uh, separated the topics. So initially I will be just dealing with ecology. So all the concepts of ecology, uh, you know, under different headings, I will go with the smallest unit of ecological studies and then we can move ahead with the larger units and later on I'll, I'll deal with biodiversity so the concepts of biodiversity and then we'll go to environment so it will be a very uh, quick session uh, where I'll be touching all the aspects related to ecology environment and biodiversity so um, as you know uh, since the integration of Indian Forest Service into civil service examination uh, as they have made a single exam for Indian Forest Service and Civil Service Examination, the number of questions from this part of uh, general studies, uh, environment, ecology and biodiversity has been uh, increased. So it has been more in number. So just from ecology, environment and biodiversity, uh, there can be around 17 to 20 questions every year. So it may be related to uh, the pollution or climate change or any kind of uh, international agreements which India has undergone under environment or like the concept related to biodiversity, biodiversity hotspots, so biomes, okay. So concepts related to basic ecological concepts like, you know, food chain, food web or endangered species. So all these things will be, uh, you know, uh, asked in the prelims examination and the in fact, the uh, number of questions from this have drastically increased since 2013 and every year it's, it's, it's keep on uh, increasing one or two questions. So uh, let's go ahead. Let's start with the course. So uh, initially I'll be talking about ecology. So let's try to understand a basic, uh, uh, you know, uh, knowledge about ecology and how it goes. Ecology basically uh, has derived uh, from a French word ecology. Okay, so ecology is derived from word ecology. Ecology is made up of two words, oikos and logos. Oikos is basically home. So oikos means home and logos means study. So this is the same terminology from which uh, economics has been derived from. So economics is uh, again derived from the same kind of terminology, oikonomics. Oikos is home and nomi is keeping, 
हाउस कीपिंग बेसिकली इकोनॉमिक्स इज अ साइंस और इज अ नॉलेज विच डील्स विथ हाउस कीपिंग सो हियर वी आर स्टडिंग एकोलॉजी विच इज होम एंड ऑलोगोस इज स्टडी सो हियर वील बी स्टडिंग द होम स्टडिंग द होम ऑफ द ऑर्गेनिज्म सो होम इन एकोलॉजिकल टर्म्स वी कैन से इट इज हैबिटेट हाउस और हैबिटेट ओके सो द एकोलॉजिकल टर्म ऑफ अ पर्टिकुलर एरिया इन विच an organism lives is called as habitat so ecology means the study of house or the habitat of an organism uh, which can be a living animal or plant or insect or any any organism any living uh, thing a biotic factor <coughs> when we take it into consideration and the kind of uh, the, the study which involves studying that organism its behavior its life cycle its interaction with the environment how its its uh, response to external stimuli and all these things uh, is what is called as ecology on a broader sense okay so it is coined by a german zoologist ernst haeckel so uh, sometimes uh, the upsc might also asked some questions like who coined the term ecology and they might give uh, the list of four scientists uh, so if you know it's easy to choose it's ernst haeckel okay so that's a good introduction about ecology so there are some definitions to understand ecology a little bit uh, better so i have quoted around three uh, most popular definitions so ecology is the study of animals and plants in relation to habits and habitats so when we study animals and plants in relation to its habit habit is how it behaves its behavior so ecology and its habitat habitat is it the place where it lives at a particular point of time so it's a definition given by elton another one uh, another simple uh, definition for ecology is the scientific study of structure and uh, function of nature so it is uh, another simple definition so another definition a little bit more elaborated definition is uh, the scientific study of interaction that determine the distribution and abundance of organisms how the uh, organism has been distributed how is their population density their abundance and uh, how do they interact with each other in the given ecosystem so that study is called as ecology according to krebs so these are some basic definitions you don't have to remember this definition it is just basically for uh, your understanding all right fine what are the branches of ecology so ecology is basically uh, made up of two branches one is uh, aut ecology and syn ecology okay so aut ecology and syn ecology so when you say aut ecology uh, it can otherwise be termed as the ecology of individuals because in aut ecology the, the the unit of study will always be the individuals so individuals will be the unit of study so basically uh, when when you study a particular organism individual organism with respect to its ecological functions it is with respect to its habit habitat its reproductive cycle its life span its ecological niche its food chain the role or the position in ecology and all the ecological concepts when we study with respect to a particular individual so that is called as aut ecology so we'll be studying its geographical distribution we'll be studying its morphology its taxonomic position life cycle and all these things so it's easy to remember aut ecology so syn ecology basically is a um, a branch of ecology which deals with the a group of organisms so here the unit of study is an entire community we'll be not studying individual organism but we'll be uh, you know studying a group of organism a com- entire community as a whole how this entire community uh, you know uh, interacts how they are morphologically distributed so what is their taxonomic position so their interactions and other things syn ecology so these are the two branches very simple now let us see how the question comes uh, you know question might come uh, with respect to uh, this 
uh, you know knowledge so the question uh, the branch of ecology which deals with individual organism as a unit of study is known as so the option could be horticology bioecology heteroecology and synecology so obviously so can you can you please comment so that i can know that you uh, have been uh, like you know the lecture has been going uh, without any hitch can you please uh, comment below uh, the answer a b c d yes what could be the answer yes disha that's the right answer or ecology so you you can choose you know if you know then obviously you can choose that uh, the branch of ecology dealing with individual organisms if the question would be like the branch of ecology which deals with a group of organisms and if they give the same um, uh, sanjay the uh, the uh, answer is a and it is not c so he c is uh, heteroecology this is not a part of ecology or a branch of ecology so there are only two branches one is autoecology and synecology and the right answer is autoecology yes gaurav hello the answer is yes disha a the answer is a perfect jayendra yes a good evening so uh, well that is how the question might come from you know this is a simple question so we'll be dealing with more and more of uh, more number of questions so let's go ahead and uh, you know uh, see now the next topic after studying the branches of ecology the factors influencing ecology right so what are the factors which influences the ecology um <clears throat> let's uh, see uh, the factors the factors which influences the uh, ecology can be divided broadly into two categories one is the biotic factors and abiotic factors right so biotic factors basically are the factors uh, which are living uh, which are uh, which is made up of living organisms and abiotic factors are the factors which are usually non living okay so biotic factors are autotrophs heterotrophs and decomposers and abiotic factors are uh, light temperature water atmospheric gases wind soil and physiographic factors and uh, we'll basically be dealing with all these things one by one starting with biotic factors all right so uh, biotic factors first one is autotrophs so we all have uh, studied this indeed in our high school uh, you know uh, lessons high school uh, this is a part of our uh, general science and uh, we have studied this biotic factors autotrophs heterotrophs and all so we'll try to uh, study this again or revise this again from the upsc perspective so what exactly i uh, you know want to uh, teach you in this is from the point of upsc how the questions could be asked so uh, anybody who is studying 7th standard can obviously tell what are autotrophs autotrophs are the organisms which prepare their own food so that is a simple uh, sense and that is the basic understanding everybody knows it uh, but basically here we will be getting much uh, deeper understanding than just preparing their own food so uh, biologically speaking when you say an organism preparing its own food so that food is nothing but the organic compounds basically the these are the photosynthetic assimilates that is the uh, assimilates that is basically the 
kind of carbohydrate the organic content which is produced by the process of photosynthesis so uh, uh, an organism which produces this organic compounds or the food on its own not depending on any other organism they are called as autotrophs so uh, these organic compounds basically are the one which gives energy this is the chemical energy which will be spent by uh, the autotrophs and in turn through a chain of series by many other organisms for gaining energy so uh, we need energy to do work for walking for doing all these life activities all the organisms needs energy and where do they get energy from they get energy from the uh, chemical compounds which they consume and uh, this chemical energy in the form of carbohydrates or carbohydrate food molecules are produced so uh, for production of this organic compound a plant or an autotroph require two things one it requires a carbon source another thing it requires energy okay these are the two things which are required by any autotroph any uh, you know organism which produces its, its own food so uh, you know uh, they require these two things the carbon source is available through the carbon dioxide that's why when you say the plant absorbs carbon dioxide so why does it absorb because it needs a carbon source for conducting of photosynthesis so the carbon which is required for uh, you know uh, conducting of photosynthesis so is obtained from carbon dioxide almost all the uh, autotrophs obtain this uh, carbon source through carbon dioxide coming to the second thing the energy so the energy which is required for production of food is obtained by light or reaction of inorganic compounds so by oxidation of inorganic compounds see uh, initially in our high school days we have just been concentrating on light okay so we say plant produces food by using of carbon dioxide uh, and sunlight and water and gives out uh, carbohydrates oxygen and water again so that's a that's a reaction of uh, photosynthesis if you could closely observe this uh, you know diagram so there is a light energy coming from uh, the sun there's a carbon dioxide absorbed from the uh, nature so in the presence of a pigment called as chlorophyll there will be a chlorophyll pigment the green pigment so the water is available it is obtained from the uh, roots through soil using all the three elements energy carbon dioxide and water in the presence of chlorophyll they will give out the carbohydrate which is a sugar form compound and oxygen so this is the basic reaction uh, but going ahead we also should know that it is not just the light which is the source of energy for plants but there are some autotrophs which are living in such places where the light cannot reach like the bottom of a lake a bottom of a pond where they do not get uh, sunlight and for energy source they have to depend on the oxidation of inorganic compounds so uh, in the first category of plants which uses light energy uh, which is be converted into chemical energy light energy is a free energy and uh, chemical energy is the potential energy okay so uh, we'll see uh, the two kind of organisms the organisms which uses light as an energy source and uh, carbon dioxide as carbon source sorry uh, yeah carbon source and produces their own food they are called as photolithoautotrophs or simply photoautotrophs so they are called as photoautotrophs or photolithoautotrophs both the terminologies are uh, you know good but the organisms i told they use carbon dioxide as a carbon source but instead of light they use the oxidation of inorganic compounds as a source of energy those organisms which are mainly some bacteria which conducts uh, the production of food uh, are called as chemolithoautotrophs or chemoautotrophs 
okay so why i'm stressing this is there is a question which has been asked regarding this so i'm uh, you know stressing a little bit on this so as you know there are two kinds of autotrophs one is photolithoautotrophs or photoautotrophs and the second kind of uh, organism is chemolithoautotrophs or chemoautotrophs okay so the autotrophs transform sunlight to make food they, that process is called as photosynthesis photo is light okay photosynthesis and the autotrophs which uses oxidation of organic compounds for production of food they are called as chemo that process is called as chemosynthesis instead of photosynthesis all right so this is the basic now there is a question uh, which is asked in 2014 which one of the following is the process involved in photosynthesis so this is the actual upsc prelims previous year question so you can read the question option a is potential energy is released to form the free energy free energy is converted into potential energy and stored food is oxidized and released carbon dioxide and water oxygen is taken and carbon dioxide and water vapor are given up so can you please comment in the comment section what would be the right answer for this can uh, can you please tell me what is the uh, exact answer yes logoprene it's b jainder b good disha it's b gagan b so very good so you have uh, got it right so b is the answer so free energy you should understand this is the sunlight uh, which is obtained as a source of energy and it is converted into the potential energy or the chemical energy even in if if they use the terminology uh, chemical energy so that is good enough okay uh, abid it's not d see d uh, if you could see it says oxygen is taken oxygen is not taken oxygen is released and carbon dioxide and water vapor are given out so carbon dioxide and water vapor are taken out what what the d is uh, uh, saying it is respiration okay so the process d is basically uh, talking about the process of respiration so here oxygen is taken carbon dioxide and water vapor are given out okay yes yes abid uh, it is uh, b all right another question okay this is a second question kindly go through this the synthesis of organic compound from inorganic compounds utilizing energy stored in inorganic substrate is called as so this is another question so which is been asked so can you please again uh, you know uh, give the answer for this read the question very very carefully synthesis of organic compounds from inorganic compounds you should understand the organic compound is what we are speaking about here is the photosynthetic assimilates or the food prepared by autotrophs from inorganic compounds uh, disha i saying it's a so let's see what the others has to say yes this side it's b it's not a so if here instead of inorganic compounds if they had given sunlight then that answer would have been a all right so that is called as photosynthesis as i said if the uh, you know uh, energy is obtained from inorganic compounds then obviously that process is called as chemosynthesis yes sonal uh, it is uh, b all right so now are you are you uh, able to understand how the questions will be asked how the questions might be twisted you know it is a very simple knowledge it is just about uh, you know we are still entering the basics of ecology 
uh, but these are the kind of questions which might come and uh, you know which could confuse yes sanjay it is b yes abid b right answer all right so now uh, you might have got the crux of how the questions could be asked and how the answer could be given all right let's move ahead let's move on with uh, the next biotic factor so which is heterotrophs after autotrophs the second category is the heterotrophs so what are these heterotrophs these are the organisms that obtain uh, the carbon for its growth and development basically uh, for any organism for its growth and development they need the car carbon source organic compounds so the organic compounds or the carbon required for the growth and development is obtained from other organic substance that means it does not produce its own carbon or its own food they obtain it from other organisms like autotrophs okay so they are called as heterotrophs like you know example uh, some bacteria fungi animals okay so uh, the heterotrophic animals can be categorized into herbivorous animals carnivorous animals and omnivorous animals herbivorous animals are the organisms which feed on autotrophs which obtain their carbon source from autotrophs okay so these are the uh, you know vegetable veg vegetarian animals you know deer rabbit elephant they doesn't feed on non vegetarian or that doesn't feed on other organisms so coming to carnivorous uh, you know uh, heterotrophs there can be a primary carnivore a secondary carnivore tertiary carnivore quaternary carnivore it will go on and omnivores are the organisms which eat both the uh, herbivorous uh, animals as well as carnivorous animals and also autotrophs they are both vegetarian and non vegetarian so if at all we have to give an example so if you give an example of autotroph can you give an example of autotroph a grass uh, yes disha it is little tricky so autotroph is grass let me give an example of uh, a herbivore okay grasshopper grass uh, hopper primary carnivore it may be frog secondary carnivore snake tertiary carnivore eagle okay so this is autotroph and these are heterotrophs got it so this is cow is a, a herbivorous animal it is a heterotroph plant is a autotroph yes plants are autotrophs can say grass or any plant you know broadly plant trees any of them could be an autotroph all right so that th those are the heterotrophs coming to uh, the last category of biotic organisms which are decomposers so decomposers are the organisms that break down the organic material to gain nutrition and energy whatever the uh, organic material which are formed by autotrophs by herbivorous animals carnivorous animals omnivorous animals once they start feeding once the plant starts accumulating the food once the heterotrophs start feeding on plants and other organisms they accumulate the organic materials uh, in their body those uh, carbon is utilized for growth and development and body building process that accumulated carb organic material when they are added when the uh, organism die they are added back to the soil and in the soil there are some organisms who break down this organic material this complex organic material and convert them into simple forms so these organic materials uh, you know enter the organic pool nutritional pool in the soil and these are again absorbed by the plants through their roots and this is how the nutritional cycle goes on and this is how the uh, the biosphere have 
survive. One of the reasons why the biosphere is functional and it keeps on going is because of this biogeochemical cycles which keep on going. Nitrogen cycle, sulfur cycle, carbon cycle and other nutrient cycles which keep on going and the nutrients are keep on cycling through the process. And for that to happen, these decomposers are very, very important. So what are these decomposers? Example of these decomposers, they release raw nutrients into the environment after breaking them down. So the nutrient, the, the uh, decomposers could be bacteria, the decomposers could be fungi, but not virus. Virus, even though it is a microorganism, it is not a uh, decomposers. So nowadays a lot of virus things are going on. So because of coronavirus, and uh, so here is a, a question for you from uh, UPSC prelims 2013. Can you uh, please? Um, yes, and uh, plants, animals, uh, dead bodies, definitely. So from these animals and plant dead bodies, these decomposers break down the uh, organic compound and uh, they release the nutrients into the environment. So can you please answer this question and uh, let me know the option. Of course, uh, that is also an example, Aziz. So can you please answer this question? Disha, very good. It's uh, two and three. Yes, Logoprian, very good. B. Two and three. B B. Yes, you got it. See, this is this is not a made up question. This is a question from UPSC prelims 2013. Okay. So unless you know that virus is not a decomposer. Uh, it becomes a little tricky. All of you, most of them will be uh, tempted to go for op option D unless you know that virus is not a decomposer. All right. <clears throat> so very good. Now we are done with the biotic factors uh, uh, influencing the ecology. So let's move ahead with the abiotic factors, abiotic factors which influences ecology. So the first and foremost uh, abiotic factor which we'll be talking about is light. Light is uh, you know an abiotic factor. So the abiotic factor could be uh, a condition or a situation uh, which influences the ecology. So light mainly uh, light is obtained from sun. Sunlight is the light energy which is the primary source of energy to all the ecosystems. See. Um, while studying uh, the biosphere, uh, we study a con con concept why there is life on earth. Okay, what makes earth so unique that uh, we know there is existence of life on earth as compared to any other planet uh, in and around. So uh, a scientist named Hutchinson, he has given uh, three basic factors, but like you know, it was a very long time uh, ago. Uh, but he has quoted three main reasons why there is uh, life on earth. One reason he has quoted is earth receives energy from a source which is alien, which is not from its own. Okay, so whatever the energy the, uh, you know which is required for all the life process for growth, development, photosynthesis, production of food for energy, all these things. So one of the main source of energy, in spite of uh, this, there are some sources of energy which are non-renewable, there are many, but one of the important source of energy which is required for thriving of living organisms is obtained from a source which is not of this earth, that is sun, okay, and it is available in infinity. So there is no limitation in the quantity obtained. Uh, the sunlight obtained. So that's one reason. Another reason he has quoted is earth is the only place where the the water molecules could be in its liquid form. 
okay so because there is a small window where like you know it becomes either water vapor just the temperature increases 100 degrees and it becomes solidified if the temperature decreases below 0 degrees so this window of temperature which could be maintained on earth could be uh, you know uh, the reason why there is water molecules present in the liquid state and the third reason which he has quoted is the water could be in they can be transferred or they can be changed from one form to another solid to liquid liquid to gas gas to solid gas to liquid and liquid to solid so they can be in interchangeable form so there's one reason you know um, those are the reasons why there is life on earth so light is one of the main reason why there is life and it is a source of energy to all the ecosystems it is mainly used by green plants during photosynthesis for the production of food and uh, within light there are three uh, important concepts okay so the factors of light which influences ecology are the quality of light intensity of light and length of the light period mm -hmm. so uh, let's take this individually and see how it goes uh, you know why i have gone deeper uh, much deeper here is there could there are chances that the question might come from this so when you say quality of light basically see the light which is required which is obtained from sun which is coming from sun or the sunlight which we call it as insulation it is a white light and it is made up of seven different uh, you know spectrums so we call it as vibgyr okay violet indigo blue green yellow orange red so that all these seven colors the rainbow colors make up the light and uh, this light when they are they, when they fall on the uh, plants plants absorb this light only in these two spectrums if you could see that uh, you know the absorption rate is more at the blue and red so plant absorbs light only in the range of blue and red okay so these are the two colors which are highly absorbed by plants if there is a question so uh, which are the colors uh, you know uh, in which the plant absorb the light and if they give blue red red green green blue or something like that so the option would be blue and red okay so you should know this so that could be a question that is about the quality of light second one is light intensity see the intensity of light on the earth is not equal okay so different parts of the earth gets different intensity of light at different time of the year so you might have seen a, a diagram which i am going to draw here if this is the sun and uh, earth earth is little tilted you know it is uh, tilted by around 23 and a half degrees so if this is the equator and this is the south pole this is the north pole and this is the degree of tilt degree of tilt is 23 and a half degrees so it can be here so during the month of december the sunlight falls directly on tropic of capricorn so the southern hemisphere receives maximum of sunlight and in the northern hemisphere it will be winter the intensity of light will be very less and in fact in the north pole the intensity will be zero there will be like facing the uh, you know 24 hours of darkness and this south pole will be getting 24 hours of uh, you know daylight so that can happen in december then again in march there will be uh, equinox okay then in the month of june uh, there will be the sunlight will be falling on tropic of cancer and uh, the northern hemisphere receives more intensity southern hemisphere less intensity so again in the month of uh, september you will get uh, equinox so two equinoxes this is summer solicitors this is winter solicitors these are the concepts which you will be studying in your geography and uh, in fact in 2019 prelims there was a question related to it on 21st of june so what will happen they had given four options and you should be very careful with this kind of basics 
so the light intensity changes with latitude and the season and that's why different kind of vegetation is present in different parts of the earth coming to the third thing about uh, the day length uh, day is day length okay so the plants respond to light and darkness so this behavioral change of plant towards the darkness and light it's called as photoperiodism so what is photoperiodism photoperiodism is the response of plants towards the light or darkness okay so plants do respond accordingly and uh, according to that they have been categorized into long day plants short day plants and day neutral plants let us see what what are the long day plants long day plants basically even though it is uh, can you can you just comment uh, what is a long day plant or what is a, uh, you know we will come to the short day plants can you try uh, guessing the answer what exactly is a long day plant so what you can understand anybody what could be a long day plant uh, okay so uh, you are giving an example uh, jayender but what what do you mean by that when when you say long day plant what exactly is that just just in uh, two three words you know i am very much sure that it could be explained in uh, you know two or three words more sunlight okay disha is saying uh, okay avidhi is saying which absorbs more sunlight disha is saying which requires more sunlight compared to others plants which exposed to more time of sunlight uh, is logoprene uh, see basically uh, you all are going with the terminology long day plants is like you know response to sunlight but the thing is uh, you know uh, to make you uh, understand please be very careful and listen to me very very carefully even though the terminology says it's long day plants usually respond to darkness plants respond to the darkness okay so the response of plants to the duration of darkness is what we talk you know give plants a different name this this is a question which has been asked okay that's why i'm uh, you know putting a little bit emphasis on this so when you say long day plants these are the plants which require uh, you know a certain amount of darkness for flowering okay mainly the day length is respect to the exposure of the plants to a particular duration of darkness and its flowering okay just imagine a plant if it gets a particular uh, you know uh, amount of darkness it does flower and if the duration of the darkness increases beyond a certain point it doesn't flower if the uh, uh, you know darkness amount is reduced it's okay okay so there is no uh, problem with reduced number of darkness but the duration of darkness should not exceed a certain point there is a maximum limit of darkness to which it has been exposed so the one which has uh, you know which is exposed to a short duration of darkness those are called as long day plants okay so similarly when you say short day plants these are the plants which require a minimum longer duration of darkness for its flowering if the duration of darkness is decreased than that maximum uh, you know duration the plant won't flower so if you could see it by the uh, diagram see there is a plant which is exposed to see it requires minimum this many hours of darkness it is getting less amount of darkness so it will not flower if the amount of darkness is like you know 
more than what is required it will flare so if the amount of darkness is like you know restricted by a small duration of light then also it will not flare okay so this is the response of plants to flaring and how much of uh, you know exposure they are to the critical night length okay it's not day length be very careful and understand long day and short day is not the response to the day length but it is the response of plant to the critical night okay darkness so here in the long day plants if they get sufficient amount of uh, you know minimum amount of darkness they will flower if the darkness amount uh, you know uh, is increased they will not flower okay so again like you know if they get in that uh, you know uh, darkness amount is less than this they will flower okay so that is what called as long day plants and short day plants there are some third category of plants called as day neutral plants which do not respond to the darkness or uh, you know flowering okay so darkness or light so whatever the duration of darkness or uh, daylight may be they will not they are not affected by this okay these are long day plants short day plants and day neutral plants so a, a, a question could be asked with uh, you know statements regarding the long day plants and short day plants so you should always keep uh, thing in remember it is a response of plants it's a photoperiodism basically response towards the critical duration of night is it okay it is a little bit complicated but uh, you know uh, try to understand because this is uh, some of the basics and this is where the uh, students will get confused get locked okay so they would have studied this topic they would have studied ecology but these are some of the areas within the uh, subject where the questions are picked up on by the upsc is it all right everybody uh, got this concept yes okay all right so let's move ahead um, <clears throat> the next uh, abiotic factor which uh, is uh, you know uh, which affects ecology is temperature obviously we know temperature affects the ecology it affects the plants it affects the animals in fact it uh, you know temperature is is responsible for creation of soil okay so it is responsible for creation of soil you know the soil is created by a process called as weathering so weathering is a process where the big rock particles are broken down into smaller particles and uh, this is called as weathering so this is how the soil is formed and uh, this weathering can takes place through various agents okay so physical agents chemical agents one of the physical agents which is which is responsible for weathering is temperature so that process is uh, you know called as exfoliation so you all study this in uh, geography exfoliation is a process where because of continuous heating and cooling of a particular surface of the rock the rock expands you know uh, one of the property of solid liquid or gas when it is exposed to temperature it increases in its size the volume increases so this is called as thermal expansion because of thermal expansion and contraction the uh, you know uh, the rock particles gets broken down they broke the bigger particles are broken into smaller particles which is called as exfoliation that is how it is created and uh, temperature is also responsible for movement of soil which is called as erosion so the the wet soils are evaporated because of temperature and they become dry so they become light they are carried from one place to another so because of these soils being present in different locations on earth they are responsible for growth of different kinds of vegetation so in uh, to put it in other words we can say temperature is one of the factor which is responsible for growth of different kinds of vegetation plants trees grasses which belong to different categories in 
different parts of the earth so in temperate you can find certain kinds of plants growing in tropics we can find certain kind of plants and trees growing so uh, because of high temperature in tropical regions we find the broad leaved trees evergreen trees in uh, temperate region we find coniferous needle shaped leaved trees so different temperature uh, different uh, you know uh, trees grows in different kinds of temperature that is one of the uh, factor responsible for different vegetation so if there is different vegetation then obviously different kinds of animals are found so temperature is in kind uh, you know responsible for the distribution of flora and fauna across the globe okay so when you come to tolerance different organisms have different cellular tolerances for cold and heat can find camels in desert can find uh, you know uh, cold blooded uh, animals in water okay you can find thick furred animals in winter regions polar bear so temperature is a kind of uh, factor why there is the diversity and why there is distribution of flora and fauna okay okay that is how temperature influences ecology coming to the next factor water water as you know it is one of the most important uh, you know uh, substance required by all the organisms it's an important component in erosion generation of soils as we see the same weathering another agent of weathering is water water transports bigger rock particles and it causes abrasion and attrition and through that process the bigger rock particles are broken down into smaller rock particles so that is how the soil is formed so soil is generated water also is responsible for chemical weathering by the process of hydration so water differentiate the organisms into terrestrial organisms and freshwater organisms we have freshwater environment terrestrial environment so they uh, you know uh, use water in different means some of them are uh, you know some of the plants grow in very high water okay some of the plants grow in uh, much lower water so which we have the categorization you can see here plant can be categorized on their adoption of water level so there is a category of plants called as xerophytes these are the plants which have undergone the evolutionary adaptation for dry environment so they can grow in extremely limited amount of water example cactus okay so cactus grows in deserts they require very less amount of water so they have their own modifications through leaves thorns so where they can uh, you know uh, survive they have succulent tissues so they can thrive with very limited water then there is next category called hydrophytes they have adoption to wet environment they cannot survive in less water they require very high amount of water the example is lotus water lily so they are called as hydrophytes there is a third category of plants called as mesophytes they have adoption for moderate conditions all the land plants wheat rice flowering plants and other things they are called as mesophytes okay so these are the three categories uh next i have uh, quoted a question so see the question and uh, try to answer this the plants which can survive with minimum quantity of water are termed as what is the answer this xerophytes xerophytes okay these xerophytes okay 
zero sides. Uh, Manish, you are saying it's B. It's not B. Mesophytes. Minimum quantity of water. Okay. So if the terminology was moderate, then obviously could have uh, said that it is mesophytes. So it is minimum. So the answer is xerophytes. Good, good. So it is D. So it is not B, Manish. It's uh, D. Yes, Himanshi, D. Join the D. D, perfect. Good guys. Yes, we shall. D, perfect. Okay. So the next uh, uh, thing, the next uh, factor is atmospheric gases. Uh, Jagan, you said A. Uh, no, it's not A. It's minimum. Uh, kindly read the question. So it's minimum. It's not maximum. If the question was maximum, the the answer would have been A. Uh, no, Rahul Jagan, it is not uh, A. It is D, right? So hope you got this concept uh, right. So the next uh, abiotic factor, which is responsible for, uh, you know, which influences the uh, ecology, is atmospheric gases. See, in that we have many kind of atmospheric gases which are present in the atmosphere in the form of heteroatomic molecules okay it may be monoatomic or diatomic molecules carbon dioxide oxygen you know several atoms atomic molecules they are present in the in the atmosphere so the most important ones uh, influencing the ecology is oxygen uh, carbon dioxide and nitrogen so those are the uh, three things which are responsible for many process which are going on in the uh, environment okay in the ecology so oxygen we all know it is important for the process of respiration so carbon dioxide is important for the process of photosynthesis okay by plants and nitrogen basically it's a plant nutrition it is one of the most essential uh, nutrients uh, which are uh, responsible for growth and development of plants so nitrogen is uh, you know a basic building block of the uh, organisms okay right uh, then comes the next uh, factor soil so soil is very very important so uh, even though soil is not extensively studied as a part of uh, the uh, ecology so a lot of soil factors we call it as edaphic factors uh, edaphic factors influences the ecology okay so these edaphic factors can be physical they can be chemical and biological factors okay so uh, in geography as a part of geography or at least when you study the uh, science part in ncrt so the basic science you will be studying soil and there are a lot of questions which do come from soil okay so you make sure you study all these physical chemical and biological properties physical properties of soil could be uh, soil color it could be soil texture, soil structure, it could be soil density, soil porosity, it could be soil moisture or soil water, soil temperature. Okay, so these are the important physical uh, properties of soil. Okay. So soil properties, some of the chemical properties are soil pH, okay, the acidity or basicity of the soil, electron, uh, electric conductivity, cation exchange capacity, anion exchange capacity, okay, carbon nitrogen ratio, right. So these are the chemical properties. 
biological properties are the organisms microorganisms worms insects which are present in the soil it may be bacteria virus fungi nematodes it can be uh, you know uh, earthworms snails okay it can be any kind of rats rodents all the living organisms in fact tree roots which are present in the soil they comes under biological properties of soil so individually you have to know this uh, you know factors because they are very very important uh, questions might come from this say for example uh, if if i quickly give you a very good uh, you know uh, insight on all this so even though it, it doesn't uh, qualify to be studied under uh, ecology part uh, you have to study it exclusively under geography but you make sure that you don't skip this part the soil is a very important part of uh you know civil services okay gs okay so when you say soil color soil color indicates the uh, kind of uh, nutrition it's a, it's a kind of uh nutrient quality or the uh, fertility of the soil okay so the darker color soils are more fertile usually the lighter colored soils are uh, less fertile uh that is called as soil color so how do you uh, measure the soil color so soil color is compared or like the, the tested using a particular instrument if you could comment uh, what how do you measure the soil color so there is a particular kind of uh, uh, you know uh, chart if you could able to uh, you know anybody of you uh, could say what what exactly is the soil color and how it is measured can anyone comment yes logopriyan munsel color chart okay so it is munsel color chart very good so this is like you know you, it, it's not uh, you know a tough science so you might have studied this in your textbooks in your ncert basic 6 7 textbooks so there is a chart called as munsel color chart and this chart has different kinds of color categories so when you see a soil you compare the soil with the color in the munsel color chart and in front of that color there is a description what kind of soil it is what are the different crops which could be uh, grown in here what is the nutritional content what could be the percentage of uh, you know uh, npk and what what are the what are the kind of uh, ph the soil might be and all these characters will be there that is the basic thing okay so munson color chart that's about soil color so these these are the basic informations you should know in this so texture what is soil texture see basically if you take uh, you know a handful of soil so you can find soil made up of different sizes right so you can find very very small soil so uh, soil particles which are little bit bigger soil particles are little bit more bigger okay so you will find all this category all this sizes of soil so the soil which is less than 0.002 mm they are called as clay soils okay so the soil which is 0.002 to 0.02 mm they are called as silt the one which is 0.02 to 0.2 mm they are called as fine sand 0.2 mm to 2 mm they are called as coarse sand anything which is more than 2 mm they are called as gravel so basically these three categories come un under the category of sand so we have clay silt and sand so the ratio of clay silt and sand is what is called as texture texture is the ratio of clay silt and sand if you hold on how much of clay is there how much of silt is there how much of sand is there so that ratio is called as 
soil texture so if you say what kind of texture of soil is you say it is clayey that means all the particles which are present in the soil is made up of very minute particles they are very very uh, you know smaller less than 0.02 mm so you say it is silty or it is sandy sandy soils you know made up of thicker particles bigger soil particles so if all the three are made up in equal ratio equal proportion of clay silt and sand which naturally is uh, you know very difficult to find unless you measure those equally and like you know mix it so but hypothetically speaking if all the three are present in equal ratio then it's called as loam l o a m loam so have you heard of loamy soils loamy soils are the soils which has equal proportion of you know clay silt and sand all the three so the more categories of soil texture could be clay loam silty loam sandy loam it is loam but little bit of sand more amount of sand sandy loam it is loam but little bit of more amount of clay clay loam some something like that okay then comes structure soil structure so when you say soil structure basically it is a shape of the soils in which shape they are arranged in okay so it can be like you know uh, platy the soil particles could be plate like it can be uh, column like you know it can be prismatic prism like it can be crumbly okay so different shapes of soil particles gives the structure okay soil density is like basically what is the mass per volume so density could be of two types one is particle density and bulk density right so uh, here uh, let me uh, you know ask you a very interesting question which has been asked uh, previously uh, particle density and bulk density what is particle density you know what is density right density is the mass per volume so particle density is when you take the volume excluding the spaces between the soil particles so you know when you take the soil it contains both the uh, you know uh, solid form as well as the area where air and water is present you now which are the inter particular space okay so these are the pore spaces so porosity or pore uh, you know also contains uh, you know it is also present in a soil if you exclude that pore space and take only the uh, <clears throat> solid particles then it is called as particle density if you include that pore space it's called as bulk density so in any of the case if i give you four options option a b c and d particle density will always be greater than bulk density option b is particle density is lesser than bulk density particle density is equal to bulk density d is cannot determine so for any soil what would be the condition so the question is like this uh, please listen if in a given soil which of the following uh, you know situation always is true a particle density is more than bulk density particle density is lesser than bulk density particle density is equal to bulk density and fourth option is cannot determine so can you please uh, you know uh, type the answer a b c d disha it's uh, b disha says it's p anybody uh, disagree with this answer or if you uh, say if there is a situation where you can uh, you know give another answer can anybody uh, other can try can i have more answers can you please comment this again says particle density is always lesser than bulk density uh, rahul says particle density is lesser than bulk density so let me explain again particle density is 
the mass per volume density is mass per volume in particle density you are excluding the pore spaces in bulk density you are including pore spaces okay again you say it's b <clears throat> any other answer i'm sorry disha i'm sorry uh, ragul jagan so the answer is always a it's not b c uh, this is where you lose uh, you know the uh, thing uh, to understand c if you include pore space okay so you will always be measuring the volume of something which does not have density pore space have negligible amount of density but you are including that in the volume so if you take mass per volume you are taking more volume and space occupied by the pore spaces are included but they do not contribute anything in mass so the bulk density will be smaller but in particle density we will be excluding the pore space we are taking only the particles which are having the volume and that's why the mass per volume will always be higher in any given situation the particle density will always be higher than the bulk density yes logopriam that is perfect answer particle density is more denser than everything you know in band than bulk density so if at all this kind of question comes please be uh, you know aware what exactly is particle density and what exactly is bulk density so you should be knowing this right so did you understand this concept disha and uh, ragul okay so samay international organization in environment ecology will happen wo environment ka part hai so i'm not mixing up main aapko sirf ecologic mein uh, leke ja raha hu i'm taking you only through the ecology part not mixing with the concepts of environment and biodiversity i'll be dealing it separately so right now we'll speak only about the concepts of ecology so i'll do it in later on class okay so did you got this particle density and bulk density those are the questions which will be asked here okay so porosity you know these are the spaces in between the particles you know soil water soil temperature ph you know there are you know acidic soils there are basic soils and uh, you know seven is the neutral anything which is lesser than seven is called as acidic more than seven is uh, basic okay it is the negative logarithm of hydrogen ion concentration more number of ions more will be the acidic uh, the, the acidic of this more number of hydroxyl ions more will be more basic will be the soil okay plant prefer little acidic soil conditions 6.5 is the thing okay so we will be studying more about acidity acidity when we are talking about the acid rains under uh, environment right so electric conductivity basically is the indirect measure of number of ions you know pure water is a bad conductor of electricity if the water needs to be uh, you know more good conductor of electricity then obviously it should have more ions pure water is not a good conductor because it doesn't have any ions so more number of ions more number of electric conductivity so if electric conductivity is measured it's an indirect measure of what is the quantity of ions is present more electric conductivity more ions and more nutritious will be the soil and less electric conductivity less nutritious can you tell me what is the unit of measurement of electric conductivity can you please copy it the unit to measure electric conductivity what is the unit to unit si unit of electric conductivity
okay rahul says it's mu and disha says it's ohm then what is the what is the unit of resistance logo priyan says this is sesman per meter so if it was you have to choose between mu and ohm what what would be the uh, <clears throat> unit okay okay rahul you got it it's ohm so mo is for resistance okay so cation exchange capacity is the amount of uh, you know cations present in the soil so the one with plus you know uh, minus and anion exchange capacity is the amount of anions which is present in the soil which are exchanged with the plants okay carbon nitrogen ratio measures the amount of carbon with the amount of nitrogen which gives you the nutritional status of the soil so this is the soil uh, you know uh, properties coming to the last abiotic factor which is physiographic factors so coming to uh, the physiographic factors the physiographic factors are altitude altitude is at what height a particular uh, environment is so obviously the bio ecology gets influenced by different altitude so we have different kind of uh, uh, ecology or ecosystems when we are at the ground level at the level of uh, you know ocean so we usually take the uh, mean sea level as the basic reference so anything which is at the mean sea level we say it as zero and as we go upper we measure the distance with respect to mean sea level we take the mean sea level as the datum or the standard reference points so at different heights we find different kind of vegetation different kinds of animals which are living so that height actually influences the uh, presence of different kinds of plants and animals in the ecology okay so again latitude latitude you know these are the imaginary lines drawn around the uh, earth so equator is the uh, you know zero latitude so as you keep moving towards north or south the latitude increases and at different latitudes we have different temperature different pressure points and uh, different kinds of uh, distribution of landforms different kinds of flora different kinds of fauna so latitude also affects the uh, you know ecology slope the degree of slope how much of slope is there slope is a very good very important uh, aspect with respect to the movement of winds with respect to erosion the kind of soil soil erosion factors so the kind of vegetation which is present so there are many phenomena ecological phenomena which changes with slope so the degree of slope actually influences the kind of um, ecology or ecosystem or community which is present aspects basically is the direction towards which it is facing the sun so it is facing the east direction or north direction south direction this also influences the kind of vegetation and the different uh, geographical conditions existing over an area and aspect is another physiological factor which influences the ecology so these are the factors of locality or these are the factors which influences the ecology so you do not have to mug up all these things the only thing which you have to do is uh, remember certain key aspects say for example uh, you know uh, if we start with uh, if if you want to go through a very quick recap of what we have studied in the factors of locality uh, you have to remember basically the photo uh, autotrophs and chemo autotrophs okay the terminologies and you have to remember what exactly uh, are heterotrophs and decomposers examples okay there was a question on that in abiotic factors you have to re remember blue and red light you have to remember long day short day plants you have to remember uh, you know uh, the three gases which are very important so you have to remember um, yeah so the soil characteristics 
okay so you have to remember some of the physiological factors these are the basic things just uh, you know uh, know the crux of this right fine moving ahead now we'll move on to different ecological concepts right see uh, before actually studying the ecological concepts so we have a hierarchy of life right so which is the smallest unit of uh, a matter so smallest unit of a matter is atom we all know that okay so atom is the smallest unit of matter which is capable of uh, taking place in a chemical reaction so there there can be a debate that no no there are smaller uh, you know particles than atom such as neutrons protons and electrons but the factor is atom is the smallest unit which can take place in a chemical reaction so we consider that as the smallest unit of a matter okay so uh, several atoms put together gives rise to a molecule right so uh, molecules are made up of different atoms several molecules put together and if it is capable of taking care of all the process of life then it's called a cell okay so many molecules make up a cell all the cell which uh, you know uh, the group of cells makes a tissue okay so tissue is collection of cells all the tissues which perform a particular function is called as organ okay so organ is made up of many tissues all the organs performing a particular a kind of function okay so they are called organ system like you know we have a uh, respiratory system is an organ system there are many organs uh, involved in respiratory system nose trachea lungs and other things digestive system is an organ system mouth stomach you know long intestine small intestine and all those so particular they, they are uh, you know uh, dedicated to perform a particular process so that's called organ system it is made up of many organs so all the organ system forms an individual we call it as organism right an organism uh, you know uh, is a collection of many organ systems so that organisms when they live in groups a particular individual or organism belonging to a particular species living together in a particular habitat in a particular place at a given time so that is called as a population population of individuals so um, a group of people belong to same species same species is a keyword which needs to be remembered so that forms population a group of population of different species population of one species population of another species so different population belong to different species living together in the place, same place interacting with each other that's called as community community is basically a, a collection of population a group of community which uh, you know includes many populations includes all the living organisms along with their abiotic factors along with non living things it may be situations or it may be conditions so like you know uh, the abiotic factors which we have discussed light wind sunlight water temperature and all these things so biotic factors along with abiotic factors forms an ecosystem ecosystem is a collection of different communities so all the ecosystems put together forms a biome okay so biome basically is a bigger geographical area with different ecosystems which has similar kinds of plants animals and climate so all the biomes of the world makes a biosphere biosphere is the biggest or the largest unit so wherever there is life on earth life on earth we call it as biosphere so biosphere is a combination of hydrosphere atmosphere and lithosphere so these three spheres wherever you find life that part is called biosphere it is a very bigger sphere it has no boundary limits because we are still exploring at what maximum height a bird can fly at what maximum depth a bacteria can survive so it's it's a thing we will study that so this is a hierarchy of life if we have to pick up a stage in this hierarchy uh, 
where we can start the ecological concept. So please uh, let me know, please comment where should I start or where should we start studying the ecological concepts, which is the right stage to start a, a concept of ecological studies. So should we start it at atomic level, cellular level, tissue level, organ, organ system, population, community, ecosystem. So if it all is there, uh, you know, let me uh, try to give you. Uh, OK, so try answering this question. So whatever the question which I asked you is uh, nothing but in the other form. This is a question. So can you please answer this question? Can you comment? Uh, Logopriyan says it is population. Abit says it's individual. Uh, Disha says it's individual. Uh, Manish Lil it's individual. Any more option? Rahul says it's B. Okay. Uh, Mitali says it's A. Okay. Himanshi uh, individual. Okay, any more answers? I don't know why uh, Logopriyan took back the answer. I wish you had retained. It's crazy B, okay. <laughs> uh, Shrikant says it's B. Okay, okay, let's, let's come back to this. Fine. Uh, so this is the uh, hierarchy which I said. Uh, Logopriyan earlier said it is B, but now he has changed the option to A. The most, uh, the mistake which most of the people do uh, usually. Okay. C. Levels of ecological studies. So you cannot study ecological concepts. See, ecological concepts contain many things, right? starting from uh, you know uh, the concept of uh, food chains concepts of edge ecotones ecological niche habitat ecological pyramids okay so you have succession many things are there so all these things you cannot study at individual level individual level doctors do that okay doctor pick up an individual study that individual you know open up his body and see all these things and many things. Studying an individual, you cannot study ecological concepts. For studying an ecological concept, you need at least more than one individual. So, population is the stage where we can actually start the, okay, the studies. Okay. So, the uh, there is a question which has actually come in the previous year, uh, you know, uh, exam. So, this question. Uh, Ecology is a discipline directly deals with all of the following levels except, okay. So it deals with community, it deals with population, it deals with ecosystem, but it does not deals with cellular, right. So here the smallest unit of ecological analysis is population, okay. It's not individual. Even if I give species, the option species is there, most of you will be tempted to uh, tick either individual or the species. This is the actual question which has been asked. Okay, which is the smallest unit of ecological analysis? The answer is population. So bigger than population is community, and then ecosystems, and so on. Okay. So see this. Remember this diagram. This is a very important diagram. So we have population, we have community, ecology, biome, and biosphere. So we can go like this. This is how we have to approach. 
and population is the smallest unit where ecological studies could be done below population either at individual level or at uh, you know uh, organism uh, organ system level or organ level or molecular level you cannot do ecological studies to study an ecology or ecological concept you need at least a category or the level of population is it all right so that is the thing so again this is another question which has come from this i didn't ask you but like you know this is the answer the answer is cellular okay there is no cellular thing it starts with population and anything above the population is what it is so uh, in the upcoming and the next uh, you know lessons we will be taking up these things okay i'll be starting with population ecology i'll be studying different concepts in population ecology right so population population uh, uh, age age groups patterns of population and i'll be discussing the questions which has been come from this population ecology in the previous years okay so the age curve the age pattern you know population density and many things then we all move to community ecology in community ecology we will study concepts like interspecific interaction where you will be having mutualism uh, you know uh, amensalism commensalism predatorism parasitism and many things and in community we will be studying uh, ecotomes edge effect uh, then uh, you know ecological niche plant succession and all these concepts so community is the best level to study most of the ecological concepts all right so then we'll move on to ecosystem ecology in ecosystem ecology we'll be studying food chain we'll be studying food web we'll be studying ecological pyramids types of ecosystems and other things then you'll be studying biome in biome different uh, you know kinds of biomes different uh, you know uh, category of biomes what are the factors influencing biomes then we'll be studying biosphere okay so these are the different levels of economy and individually we will be taking up these as the main headings so and uh, we will be trying to include the concepts of econ ecology within this uh, you know main uh, uh, thing okay we, within within this headings so that you will get a very concrete organized kind of Uh, you know material for your study so if at all you get come across any of the concepts say for example ecological pyramids you can directly remember it was under ecosystem ecology okay because under each headings you will be having different concepts and those concepts are they do belong to that heading and these are the pure concepts of ecology so we are not mixing anything with environment or biodiversity so once we are done with all these concepts of ecology we will then uh, you know move ahead with pure biodiversity biodiversity concepts so that this becomes uh, you know a cake walk for you to answer any kind of question which is asked from ecology environment and biodiversity so uh, see uh, this is a youtube live class and uh, so uh, the full course of this exclusively Uh, you know uh, available on uh, an academy plus and uh, while joining an academy plus so you should be uh, you know uh, buying the subscription and while buying the subscription you have to uh, remember this code so chirant raj so this is the code and if you enter this code you will be getting a discount of 10% so whatever the fees which is there so to avail uh, 10% discount in the entire fee you have to uh, mention this code chirantraj okay so sorry it's chirantraj c h i r a n t h r a j anyways so let's start with uh, the concept so you uh, did this question so there is no cellular now i think you can you'll be able to answer uh this question so you are even done with this question so population is the right answer now let us uh you know uh, move on with the first chapter in this uh in the ecological studies so which is population ecology 
is it all right no are you are we going in a right pace uh, or any any kind of thing do you have any any confusion in the previous lectures so if you could give me a go ahead i will will go ahead and proceed with population ecology uh, please give me a thumbs up if you uh, are all right okay shall we go ahead yes please comment please let me know okay abid right thank you so uh, let's go ahead and start with population ecology so please remember this hierarchy okay population community ecology ecosystems biosphere uh, biomes and biosphere so your entire ecology the easiness of understanding ecology uh, biome is uh, you know the geographical area which contains similar kinds of plants animals and climate we will come to biome uh, ragul jagan we will come to biome and we will uh, you know discuss the entire concepts of biome but uh, let's start with uh, you know the base let's start with scratch so i am assuming that you people uh, like you know have no idea about ecology and we are starting from the basics so i am going from a b c d okay so uh, let's start with the basics i'll come to biome and I'll, i'll give you all the concepts of biome so let's start with the first thing which is population population ecology so we'll see different co concepts under population ecology and different questions which has been asked under population ecology right okay what is a population what exactly is a population so uh, in ecology when you say population so population is a group of interbreeding and interactive individuals of the same species inhabiting the same area at a given point of time so this is the definition of population so in this you have to uh, you know uh, concentrate on three important things one is interbreeding okay interactive same species okay so in same area of course this is the fourth one four things has to be remembered so when you say population make sure that you understand that the individuals of a population belong to the same species if there are 20 dogs on the street it's a population of dog okay so if there is a dog there is a cat cat there is a rat and a human you cannot call those four as a population okay because they do belong to different species if you want to call any group of individuals as a population they should belong to a same species that's one thing same species you understand this second thing they should be in the same area you know uh, an individual of a same species living here another individual living in some other geographical area so you cannot copy it call it as a population under ecology you know uh, they don't belong there they should be uh, you know living in a same area at a, at that particular point of time so they should be interactive and interbreeding they should breed among themselves okay uh, the species usually happens the breeding happens with its own species so if one species breeds with another species there are three possibilities one is there will be no fertilization that, that 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 would don't give rise to an individual so it will be a failure because two different species second thing there might be uh, you know a kind of fertilization but whatever the hybrid which belongs will be infertile okay and third thing it may give to an individual which may be fertile but it cannot survive for a longer time so the interspecific breeding will 
always be uh, you know uh, not so successful so one of the example like you know mule how do you remember mule what is a mule can you comment what is a mule do you know what is liger right do you know what is tomato and tomato what is a mule can you comment please can anyone tell me what is a mule yes disha it's uh, you know it's a you know cross between horse and donkey okay so that is a mule so that is interspecific hybrid liger is a cross between lion and tiger you know that is like you know even though the that uh, lion and tiger tiger mating give rise to a baby that is that cannot survive for a longer time so these are the interspecific breeds so mostly it will not be successful exactly pomato is like potato and tomato so you all uh, you know awesome guys you know the answer so this is interspecific for mostly in a population the mating happens in between the species that's called population so the branch of ecology that studies the structures and dynamics of eco you know the population so what is the structure of a population and what is the dynamic of a population so that is called as Uh, you know population ecology that branch of ecology is called as population ecology and population is the smallest unit of ecological analysis please remember earlier we had a question on this so population is the smallest unit of ecological analysis right fine so if we move ahead uh, in a population if we look into the age distribution how the ages are distributed in population so according to the uh, you know age distribution there are we can categorize the age into three groups one is a pre reproductive group okay so this group basically is no reproduction they are juvenile so uh, in any any of the population it including humans so take any species there will be a stage where they haven't achieved maturity they do not contribute in any way to population increment so they are called as pre reproductive group okay so there is a reproductive stage these are the mat sexually mature stage where active reproduction takes place this is a population which contributes to the population increment they are actively reproducing and after a certain stage uh, they loses their uh, maturity and they become over uh, you know uh, reproductive or post reproductive phase so they are beyond reproduction phase and they are the ag group uh they do not contribute again in any kind of population increment so if you could remember any some concepts in economics so we have similar kind of uh categorization based on contribution to economy right so we call it as demographic dividends so we categorize a population into uh you know pre uh contributors or like you know the juvenile stage and people who are older who do not work the young ones who are responsible on their parents or the working population and the older ones who are again you know uh, you know dependent on the working population so those are these two categories so they do not contribute in economical uh, development of a country and this working population usually we say 0 to 15 is the one which do not work usually in uh, the human uh, these are the stage where compulsory going to school the school education is compulsory they are not allowed to work so beyond 
till at the age of 65 so this is the working population this is the age in which both this category of people and anybody who is above 65 is also dependent upon so the more of this population the more will be the economical development that's a concept which we use in uh, economics similarly instead of the contribution towards the economy here we take the contribution in population increment okay so that is the thing basically just understand in age distribution we have pre reproductive reproductive and post reproductive right now answer this question uh, i will explain why i am asking this this is a question from prelims uh 2011 so in 2011 prelims there was a question uh answer this question once you answer this i'll go to the next slide which has these graphs and i'll explain all the concepts to you Uh, thank you goro uh, can you please comment uh, the answer Uh, this is a question from 2011 prelims so now you might have got an idea where exactly they are picking the questions from so it, the questions uh the previous year questions and the syllabus are the two headlights which you should always have uh while preparing for any kind of examination or any stage of examination it may be prelims mains or the interview so interview you cannot have the previous questions uh, but you can get some idea through the mock but prelims and mains you should have the previous year questions as your guiding lights without which you will get lost so you will lose your way you will lose your path the direction in which you are studying so this gives you an idea about are you ready studying the right material are you going in a right direction so whatever you are reading is it giving you good benefit cost analysis okay okay so abit says it's a uh, ragul says it's b disha says it's b okay any any more answers if you have studied uh, the previous year questions definitely you might have come across this question and you would have known the answer by this this is this is one such kind of a question if you don't know the answer don't try to apply the concepts of csat here you know the direction in which it goes and other things there's a clear cut mechanism uh, you know to answer this if nobody has any answer can we go ahead i'll come back to this question again so i'll i'll be back see after age a distribution there's a pattern of age distribution right so in the entire age distribution you have four stages stage 1 stage 2 stage 3 and stage 4 so here it represents the pre reproductive stage reproductive stage and post reproductive stage above 65 years below 15 years in case of humans or take any other category any other uh, you know kind of organism so the uh, age category different dif differs de de depending on the life span uh but to put it in this way if you take the male population and female population and if you draw across the uh, population uh, in numbers so you will get these four patterns the first pattern is rapid growth okay so here you can find more number of individuals 
which are in the pre reproductive stage and as they go uh, enter the reproductive stage their population decreases there will be that means that there is lot of reproduction happening but those are not sustaining to be alive till they go to the age of reproduction and after reproduction there will be very less people which are left in the post reproductive stage that means the death rate is very high the birth rate is also very high if you take in other sense say for example uh, you know uh, this is a kind of population growth if you take human population this is a stage which are found in the most uh, you know underdeveloped countries so you have very high population uh, you know rate at the lower rate very high birth rate because there is no regulation there is no education there is no uh, you know uh, uh, any kind of uh, policy from the government to stop uh, the uh, reproduction they don't know that more number of reproduction will lead to poverty and uh, that's why there is very high birth rate so you can see it here and there is no medical facilities there are a lot of diseases so uh, you know uh, that's why there is okay so that's why there is less people living after the age of 65 there is very high death rate and very high birth rate so you will get this kind of graph okay if a country advances a little bit then the population growth instead of being rapid they will be slow okay there will be slow growth the birth rate reduces okay so uh, the death rate will also reduce a little bit okay the population growth becomes slow slower growth so you can see the uh, number of individuals here are entering the age of reproductive stage and they are also having a good number of population more than the rapid growth here the people who are contributing in the population uh, you know uh, reproduction are higher and that again leads to good number of individuals in the pre reproductive stage and the same number of individuals are passing on to the next stage and as they move on obviously because of age factor people will die there is death rate but not as high as this it has been reduced then there is a stage which is called as a stable stage okay so in stable stage there is high uh, you know uh, birth rate okay so very low death rate reduced uh, you know birth rate so uh, the same number of people are entering here maybe this is because of improved medical facilities improved vaccination government uh, you know involvement good number of primary health centers so the death rate has reduced so you can find more number of people in the post reproductive period so you can see there is a kind of stabilized uh, kind of growth here among the people okay so this is a stable stage and the fourth stage is shrinking so this can be find in most advanced cases india is uh, you know in this third stage in population okay so we are in a, uh, you know uh, going towards the st stable stage so a few years back 10 20, 20 years back we were in stage 2 okay we were in stage 2 and 40 50 years back we were in stage 1 okay so most of the advanced countries they have uh, you know the shrinking population right so the number of birth rate is decreased low birth rate number of death rate is also decreased low death rate low birth rate so there is very high population who are in the post reproductive stage very very high population in uh, the reproductive stage so uh, but because of the lifestyle because of things the uh, younger ones the number of people giving right is reduced so there is decline in population so this is the 
pattern of age distribution right so uh, if we go back to this question now can you uh, based on this information based on this graph different types rapid slow stable and shrinking so can you answer this question now consider the four age pyramids given below namely and representing four different countries okay these represent four different countries which of the following entity there is a declining population can you now answer the uh, question kadam i'll i'll, I'll uh, uh, can you can you can you uh, please answer this question which of the thing and can you please comment uh, I, I, after this i'll be ending this can you please comment which of the uh, uh, abid it's not d so look at look at this thing so shrinking or the uh, you know declining population is in fourth stage okay so here the option is c so can you see this is the last shrinking type right this is stable this is slow and this is rapid right rapid slow they have interchanged these diagrams according to our thing yes uh, lokesh it is c Okay. Yes, Rahul. It's C. So tomorrow I'll, uh, you know, uh, so I, I'll be ending this class because it's a two hours class. So I'll be ending the class, and uh, because I can see in the comment that uh, some of the students, Kadam, you didn't understand this. I'll, I'll, I'll take up this uh, discussion tomorrow again. We'll start with. patterns in age distribution so i'll again uh, you know explain you in a simpler manner so we'll uh, do this and again we'll move on to the next concepts is it all right so i'll take up the patterns in age distribution again so i'll i i'll uh, you know uh, make it much more simple explaining the characteristics of individual kind of diagram and again i will move on to the next topic in population ecology so we'll end up here we'll uh, you know uh, stop our lecture here and from in in tomorrow's class i'll pick up at the same stage yes uh, rahul rest abid it is c so um, right answer so we'll stop here we'll stop at this stage and uh, thank you so much uh, so we'll meet again tomorrow and we'll move ahead we'll ca ca carry on with the the remaining topics okay we'll we'll continue from the population all right so thank you so much uh, yes ashu sharma it is c okay guys thank you so much so it's been uh, great teaching uh, you so we'll meet again very shortly thanks a lot uh, tomorrow it's at 4 uh, i believe 4 o'clock